Well, hello everybody and welcome along to another video. This video is the uh, a bit of a fitting guide for to fit the um, Hitchcock's tachometer or rev counter to the uh, Hunter 350. So this was a Christmas gift from a, a friend of mine, and uh, this is uh, going through the uh, what's included in the pack and the process for installing the uh, the rev counter. So it comes as a kit from Hitchcock's and within the kit there uh, they come pretty much all the components that you need to fit the rev counter to the Hunter 350. I believe it also is uh, suitable for fitting to the um, 350 Meteor because they're pretty much exactly the same engine. So I believe that that's uh, applicable to the Meteor as well. So I'm just doing a bit of an unpacking at the moment. So that's the um, the uh, the rev counter itself. Um, this is the mounting bracket that fits uh, onto the hunter that uh, attaches the uh, the rev counter and uh, these are the various wiring accessories that uh, that are required to um, to connect it up so we'll just uh, have a look what we've got in the packet here yeah so that is the uh, that's an auxiliary that's for extending the auxiliary power supply the 12 volt power supply this is a, uh, a cable that is used to pick up a, a signal from the coil so that interfaces with the coil and we'll see that as we start to fit the uh, the, uh, the components onto the bike and these are the uh, various mountings and grommets that, uh, that need to be uh, used to um, to fit the bracket so we're just unpacking that and we'll see what we've, uh, we've got included in the box. There's a couple of spacers there, two grommets, two small grommets, another top hat spacer, plain spacer, washer, and uh, another large grommet. So two small grommets, one large grommet, two sort of top hat spacers, one spacer, one washer. And then we've got a six millimetre um, bolt there for fitting the uh, the bracket to the to the hunter, and then included within that as well are the uh, the fitting instructions um, provided by Hitchcock's to assist you with. And they're pretty good. They've, they they uh, um, there's a lot of information included there, so they uh, just just follow those instructions, and you can't really go far wrong. Yep, so just sorting everything ready to start to uh, think about fitting it. So we're unpacking the uh, the tachometer now, the rev counter. It's a very nice looking rev counter. Uh, it does fit well aesthetically. It looks good on the bike. Um, you've got the rev counter itself and a packet of wiring, and then there's the uh, instructions for setting up the rev counter. You don't need that wiring that's included in that package. So unpacking the uh, the rev counter now. Plenty of uh, length on the uh, on the wire there to connect it into the headlamp, which is where you'll see where it goes as we get further into the fitting. So that's everything pretty much unpacked, really. Everything you need to fit the tachometer. Yeah, you can't do anything without two. Just unpack this. What you've got in there as well. So there's the, uh, the setting up instructions for the the rev counter. There's a uh, so that wiring you don't need. And there's a little mounting bracket there. That bracket is for if you're fitting this rev counter to any other model of bike. Because I think this is a a generic rev counter that can be fitted to various other bikes. And there you've got the two uh, little set screws that fix the tachometer to the uh, to the to the to mounting bracket right so I'm just doing a little bit of pre-assembly here so let's have a look what we got so I'm just putting in the large grommet 
fits quite uh, snugly into that hole on the bracket. And the large top hat space so fits inside there. side so the next grommet again this is part of the mount this grommet the, the large the two holes um, on this end of the of the bracket are for mounting to the handlebars as you'll see when we when we start to put the components onto the bike and each of those has the, uh, the top hat spacer inserted inside them so we're just putting the uh, the smaller of the two top hat spaces in there now, just to open the grommet up. The third hole in the additional grommet is for the wiring, as again we'll see as we start to put the uh, put the bracket and the and the rev counter onto the bike. Yep, there we go. So that's pretty much um, the off the bike fitting. Now moving on to the bike. So the first bolt we need to remove is this is the handlebar mounting bolt. Um, that's a 13 mil socket. So that's an 8 mil thread. So I've just remove that to start with. You need quite nimble fingers to fit these, uh, to get at these bolts. Yeah, that's the uh, the set pin. So then looking at it from uh, from the front now, there's the spacer going into the for the smaller mounting, and the bolt going through, and. And another spacer sits on top, or, a, or the washer sits on top with another spacer. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky now, because we've got to try and get that bolt in. The hole that this bolt goes into is already drilled and tapped uh, into the handlebar mount. And it sits in front of the, the mounting bolt that, we are that I removed a few seconds ago. So a little bit of fiddling now to try and get that into the uh, into the threaded hole in there and then once that's in you put the uh, the 8 mil bolt and the bar mounted bolt back in. So that's pretty much the uh, the mounting bracket Installed, tighten it up. That's again 13 mil. 13 mil socket, pretty straightforward to get in. Not a lot of room to manoeuvre, but yeah, it's sufficient. Better to be done with a socket rather than a spanner. Just pulling that up tight. That's fully secured back in, and then just tightening up the the six mil bolt, and that's pretty much the uh, the bracket complete. So a little bit tight, a lot, a lot of room to manoeuvre. Right, the next thing is to get. The, the, the third, the second small grommet into the hole, the remaining hole, because this is where your tachometer wire goes through. So I, I chose to do it once it was on the bike. It's, they're not hard to get in. And then p pushing your wires through, through that, uh, through that grommet in um, the bracket. A little bit of a fiddle, but they do go. You do them one at a time. 
but they all get comfortably through. And then just feeding the wire through. Just tidying up, checking that they're all secure. Nothing's moved through the pushing through process. Yeah, they're all fine. All good. And then pushing the rest of the wire through. Threading it in. And then the, uh, the rev counter lines up nicely on the bracket then. And you've just got to put the two small set screws, set screws in just to hold the tachometer rev counter in place. They're very small, they don't go in very far. So pretty straightforward to fit really, just the two of them. And they're in, and then just tighten them up with an Allen key. Job done really, pretty straightforward. And then just nip them up. Up tight, job done. And that's the tachometer mounted. As you can see, it looks it fits in quite nicely. It's not intrusive. Uh, next job is to, is to release the tank. I didn't take it off. I just released it to give myself a bit of room, and you'll see why in a minute. So it's uh, just to release the remove the real mounting bolt for the tank. Just to give yourself a, I say, a little bit of uh, of working room, and then what I did, I lifted the tank and just put a rubber mallet under it, which fitted perfectly for just to hold that, just to raise it that small amount. It doesn't need to raise a lot, and you'll see why I raised it now, because you need to get at this coil uh, plug and socket here and remove the the uh, the plug to the coil. Um, and it's nice to have that just that extra couple of inches that lifting the tank gives you. So I've released that, and then the next job is to insert that extension piece. And what this is doing is extending the wire to the coil, but taking a fly off lead from it. That's all it's doing, really, is taking the fly off lead. So there's a plug and socket on there. So I put the plug into the, uh, into the, into the, the socket that I've just removed the other plug from. A little bit fiddly, but if you just take your time, it's not too much of a problem to do. And, and listen for the positive click that, so that you know that it's fully home. There's definitely a little click you can hear as you push that in. And I'm just using a screwdriver just to give it a bit of extra push. But I did hear it click when it went in. And then uh, the, the fiddly part now is to plug the the plug that you removed previously into the new socket so that's done so all I'm left with now is the flying lead that I've created there it is that's the flying lead that's going to go up to the headlight fitting and this is taking the pulse from the coil that's the purpose of this lead so just tucking everything away and making sure it's uh, it's neat remove the the mallet that I used to lift the give me a bit of space under the tank and then and that push back in and the uh, and the bolt and bolt back in to, to secure the tank back in place. So I'm just tightening up that uh, securing the tank. Job done. So the next job is to remove the headlamp. Uh, this is very straightforward, two, two screws, one on either side, just pop them out. And then just release the headlamp from the, from the body. I like to unplug it just so I can put it out of the way, it, uh, rather than leave it hanging. It's, uh, it's only two, two plugs that you need, two plug and sockets you need to release. That's the, uh, the low beam. And then just releasing the headlamp. Just pulls out. A little bit tight, but it will it will pull out. 
there you go and uh, so the next job is to feed the wiring through this is the wiring from the tacker it's feeding it through and getting it into the headlamp body pretty straightforward the openings are down there so it's just just rooting it through really and then fishing it out inside the headlamp That's it, and that's uh, that's through. So I bought the wires from the uh, ref counter into the headlamp. And there they are, just checking them again, making sure that they're all, uh, no damage has been done with whilst removing them. Then the uh, bringing this wire through, the yellow wire, this is from the coil. So routing this through, just follow the existing wiring routes, and you can't go far wrong really. And this will be coming into the rear of the headlamp as well, surely. So there you go. As I say, just just fishing it through. lots of fiddling with fitting this but that yeah that's through that's lovely but that's inside the headlamp as well now just checking that it's uh, it's all good so now I've got the, uh, the rev counter wire and the wire from the coil both inside the headlamp now and we're starting ready to start thinking about wiring this up so the next job is to remove these sort of two rivets here that release the inner sort of headlamp um, containment the whole the wiring all sits behind this so it's, it's flipping out these two the plastic rivets uh, you also just release them and then pull them out a little bit fiddly but they do come out try not to break them they are quite fragile um, but yeah so they're out and then just removing this, this this inner sort of shell. What the wiring sits behind. Just prise it out from behind the um, the headlamp mount bolts. It's, it's made of plastic. It's pretty flexible, so you shouldn't have too much trouble removing it. All you got to do is just get it out of the way, really. And then the next job is to start fishing the wires behind the. Uh, the loom with the rest of the wire so this is the auxiliary this splits the auxiliary wires so inside here is auxiliary plug and socket where you can pick up 12 volts from so just remove the cover a little cover over the top of it just remove that and then connect that that um, socket the plug that you've uncovered plug it into the socket there and what you've done now is you extended the you split the 12 volts away again now. And now we can start to, to, to connect up the, uh, the rev counter wiring. Not a great deal to do here, as you'll see shortly. So just fish it in, get it in so it's in the right sort of place. And you only need two of the wires out of this loom here now at the moment so pick up the uh, the red the positive get it into the the red on the um, the auxiliary that you've just installed get it in make sure they're tight they're, they're pretty good connects good good tight push do the same with the negative the black so red to red and black to black Let's get that in there get it in push it in tight make sure it's nice and tight and secure so that's the black connected so that's the positive and negative to the rev counter connected 12 volts and then what you've got is this yellow wire from the coil um, there you go yellow wire And we're going to connect that yellow 
from the coil to the yellow to the tachometer. It's male on the tachometer, female from the coil. Connect those, make sure they're tight again. And that's pretty much the wiring done. You don't need the, um, the green or the blue. And then what you can do is just put the, the cover, the socket cover that was on the auxiliary, just, just find that and then put that onto your, your extended auxiliary. And you've, 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 got another, you've still got your auxiliary should you need it for connecting anything else. So just put the cover back on just for neatness purposes. There you go. And that's the wiring done. And then it's just a case of tidying it all into the headlamp housing spend as much time as you need to do this, get it all tight, neatly and tidily placed in there with the rest of the loom wiring and then get the uh, the, uh, the plastic mounting back inside there behind the, uh, the headlamp mounting bolts get the little plastic sort of rivets back in to hold it in place two of those back in we go so those are in to hold the uh, hold those that sort of wiring guard if you like for one for better description in place and bring the headlamp back just again the two two connections plug them back in That's the main plug to the to the main beam, and your auxiliary or your parking light or whatever. I think I think it's parking light. Just connect that one back up, and you're done. Really, that's it. And then remount your headlamp. So two bot two screws back in to hold the headlamp. Nice and straightforward. And that's pretty much the mounting, uh, the, the fitting completed. So, just turning the ignition on now. Nothing happens until you start the bike up. And the bike up, so he the, the, does a, just to show you that it's got a, uh, it's working, he does that full cycle and then stops. And then, it, if you have a look, noticed here it was settled at 500, 500 just over 500 rpm now I need to I need to thank Paul Holmes one of the channel viewers here because he pointed out to me in, a, in comments to one of the videos that that is not correct that's not the the sort of the revs that you would expect to see on a on the hunter you'd expect to be seeing a tick over of about a thousand and fifty rpm so what I'm doing here is just look, setting up the colours of the, uh, the taco. You can change the colours, so you can set them you know, to blue, or you can set them to, I think the next one I set it to is orange. We'll have a look. So you can set them to the display to blue. You can see the, there's two buttons on the back of the taco, the mode and the set. I've set it to orange now, uh, and then I've set it to white. And I settled on or, uh, blue, that's the colour that I was going to leave it. So there we go. And you can see it's ticking over at the moment at just uh, at about 600 RPM. That is incorrect. But that's just showing the uh, how to set the colours on the, on the taco. And that's pretty much the job done, the installation done. But then we realised, thanks to Paul, I uh, realised the settings were incorrect, so now we're going to sort the settings out. So, uh, as you can see, it's ticking over at about 600 RPM idling. 
and what you, and it's because it's it's default setting is IP one R, so it's one pulse for revolution, and that's not right. It needs to be one pulse for two revolutions, and I'm just setting using the mode and set button now, and you can see the instructions in the bottom corner. I'm setting it to one pulse for two revolutions, and there you can see straight away it's gone to the. the the revs we would expect it to be at. So we're, we're around about 1,200 RPM at the moment, but it does settle down. It's settled down to about 1,000 now. Now what I'm doing is you can set a rev range that you want the light, the, see the sort of the blue light behind the needle on the rev counter, to illuminate at a particular rev range so to, to assist you with changing gears. Now I've set it to um, to trigger at 3000 RPM and I'm just setting it up to do that now and again you use the modes and set buttons on the back of the rev counter and just follow the instructions provided and there they are on the bottom of the screen to assist if they're any use but they are in the pack and there we go at 3000 revs we can see the light coming on now so that's pretty much um, it really I hope you found this video useful um, if you have, please uh, consider subscribing and leave a like. And um, if you've got any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer it. So they, this is fitting of a rev counter on a Royal Enfield Hunter. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all again soon for another video.